Hello， 大家好，诶，我系小马 Green， and welcome to my little Cantonese corner。今日二零二一年九月十四号星期二。Today it is Tuesday, the fourteenth of September, twenty twenty one, and I'm doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to be talking about what probably is a little bit old news now, but it is about Nicole Kidman coming to Hong Kong to record the Expats, an Amazon series based on the book The Expatriates by Janice Lee. Now, in the newspapers, it started back in July because Nicole Kidman flew in to Hong Kong and was not required to do quarantine.、Um, still, three weeks quarantine is required to enter Hong Kong. There are a few stipulations: medium risk and no, not vaccinated, high risk country and, and vaccinated. You still have to do three weeks of quarantine. I did three weeks of quarantine back in March, April. End of March into April, it was three weeks at the Dorset Wan Chai, and it was not as bad as I thought because I planned it out well. But so having spent three weeks in one room、um, is something that I know because I did it.、Uh, so I mean, if you have to not do it, of course you'd surely be taken up on that. So if Nicole Kidman got clearance from the Hong Kong government for purposes of her work to not do quarantine, well. Who would say no, no, no? I'll do quarantine. So again, it's down to the government not respecting the people of Hong Kong. No surprise there, because there's not a lot of respect、uh, that the government has for the people of Hong Kong, as evidenced by everything that's been happening in the last few years, and dare I say, even before that, Hong Kong people seem to come last on the list of people that the Hong Kong government tends to respect. Now, I use the term respect. Why? Because, as you know, where is it? My book, which I should have, let's see, it's up here in the bookshelf. My book, "Roll with It," is all about respect, keeping an open mind, listening, and learning. So, if you've not yet gotten a copy of this book, please do. It's on Amazon at JustRoll.co, which will go right to the Amazon page. I'm kind of working on setting up something different, but for the time being, that is where to find it. If I change it, I'll put that down in the description box. That this book is written for children, but it has a lot of life lessons inside, starting with respect. So basically, that's kind of how I want to frame the discussion about Nicole Kidman, because serious lack of respect towards the Hong Kong people in coming into Hong Kong and not doing quarantine is that Nicole's fault? No. If any of you out there were given the opportunity to not pay an astronomical amount of money to stay in a hotel room for three weeks and see no one except the people who come to test you on like the seventh and the fourteenth day, I can't remember. I was tested twice in quarantine, and then spending that time wondering, like, is it going to come back positive? Will it be a false positive? What, what will happen? It has happened to people where they've been transferred immediately to hospital upon finding out that they tested positive after flying in and paying all that money to to do quarantine. So that was the first controversy, the controversy that happened back in July with Nicole Kidman. The second, of course, was when she left. Well, there have been a couple. Sideline minor controversies, like they changed a street to look more Chinese. The director brought in some scrolls and some stereotypical things that might be considered more Chinese to make the street more look more Chinese than it actually is in real life.、Um, but however, that may have been done. That may have been a confused story with trying to turn one of the streets into looking more like a street in Malaysia as opposed to one in Hong Kong. You know they do these things all the time. I mean, Hallmark Channel is famous in the United States for for thinking that you're filming in the U.S. and they name the town that they're in, but actually it's not a town in the U.S. at all. It's in Canada. So obviously we know this happens all the time. Beaches in California being used for the movie Troy, which was set certainly not in the United States.、Um, So that happens all the time. So that was kind of like brought up in the news as some talking point, but that's not really the big one.、Um, what happened then was Nicole Kidman left Hong Kong because apparently she was filming in Hong Kong, had creative differences with the director Lulu Wang, and couldn't put up with Hong Kong filming conditions, and so cut her visit short, and will only be back coming back in November. This one is. All、allegedly, right? But I do have some things to say about it because when I first saw the picture of Nicole in Hong Kong and heard about her idea, or what they were saying was that she really 
couldn't adapt to the conditions. There were too many people around her. She needed her space. And it was all said with that kind of intonation, kind of like this privileged person who comes in and needs more space and needed needed a few more, um, a little bit more pampering maybe than what the conditions could have provided. And when I saw that picture of Nicole in Mong Kok, my first thought was, first of all, that is so cool. And I wish I could have gone down there to see her um, and to see the entire filming process. Um, and I'll get to what I think about the book itself because that was the first thing is that why are they filming? Sorry, I digress. But why are they filming this book now? Apparently the rights were bought by Nicole's company Blossom Films back in 2018 before the riots, before everything, before the national security law came into effect. So that was literally a different time. The book was written about expatriates living in Hong Kong, which a lot of people now think is quite tone deaf um, to be talking about this now when Hong Kong has been going through a lot of difficult times. I mean, we're not living back in the time of when the book was written. And so a lot of people think that that's kind of very insensitive at the least and just a slap in the face again to the people of Hong Kong. But getting back to when she was in Mong Kok and I first thought was, yes, I wanted to be down there. The second thought was like, I am not surprised if those stories are true. Now, allegedly, she was complaining about the conditions. Even I know, as somebody that kind of is on the fringes of the entertainment industry in Hong Kong, having done voiceovers, I did appear in a Chinese TV show once that was filmed on set. Uh, so it like dabbled here and there. Uh, it is not a fun time to be on set for 12 hours a day, a lot of waiting around. And Hong Kong is hot. It's August. You're in the streets of Mong Kok. There are throngs of people. Um, it surprised me that they didn't respect her enough to make sure that possibly she had a room in a hotel nearby or elsewhere, even an air conditioned van that could have taken her somewhere. If that is true that she was saying, I need to get away from these people, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't want to stand for 12 hours on a Mong Kok street, um, especially the market streets. No way. So that to me was absolutely warranted. She may have just said like, why wasn't this thought of? Because a lot of times when you're in Hong Kong, they will do things that are done out of practicality or they're done because they're used to working hard. They're used to putting up with a lot that I think people that come from the West think like, why? And that is a big word that differentiates I always said this. I'm not sure if I've said this in another video, but differentiates between a Western perspective and a Hong Kong perspective is the word why. Because a lot of times they just don't ask why. You either just do it or you do it and complain vociferously behind behind everyone's back about how much you hate doing it. But it's very practical. You just do it. And a lot of times, um, having been there 30 years, I I guess, fell into that as well. You don't really look at the comfort aspect. You just get on with it and do it. And so for someone who's not used to that, used to having uh, space for one thing, there's not a lot of space in Hong Kong. Even when you go to a restaurant, this happens all the time. You'll go into a restaurant in Hong Kong and it will be pretty much empty, which doesn't always happen, but you know, it, it might be off time and it's empty, but there might be one or two tables already full. They will seat you literally next to the only other two tables in the restaurant. Even if it's like 50 tables in the restaurant, you will be seated next to them. And that's um, same when you get in an elevator, get into the lift. You might find that you're standing there and a few other people get in. And instead of spacing it out, so you've got that the space studies have been done on this on how Westerners perceive space and, you know, your spatial bubble kind of thing. Um, that doesn't really exist. So people will just stand right next to you, even though there is extra space. And you might be thinking, why? In line at the ATM, same thing. You're in line at the ATM and literally somebody is like standing right behind you. And it's not to look over your shoulder. Well, I mean, it could be, but usually not to look over your shoulder and to see what you're doing. But just that spatial awareness isn't really there because you're living in a city of how many million people. 
seven last count. When I moved to Hong Kong, it was 5.5 million in 1988. And now it's like 7.5, I think. I haven't looked at the latest, but 2 million more. And um, at the time when I moved to Hong Kong, Mong Kok was where you went if you wanted to experience. I remember my friends saying, we have to go to Mong Kok because you have to experience like the density. It was the highest uh, in the whole world. I think Mong Kok was up there with one of the most highly uh, high density places in the world was Mong Kok. I think Japan or Tokyo was up there as well. But Mong Kok was definitely up there, if not one, the second, the second most highly dense <laughs> the high density place in the world. So now with 7 million people, pretty much everywhere is like that. But I do remember back in the day going there. So you can imagine if you're not used to that, a simple, she may have just saying, why? Like, why wasn't it done that I would have a place and we maybe collectively would have a place to go air conditioned hotel room nearby, or even a flat no one was using and the, they rented it out for a while to go to relax and get away from the heat, the throngs of people, and just the general, it's, it's very closed in when you're in the market streets, there's not a lot of air, you know, um, it's kind of like, um, you know, in big cities where they've got the the tall buildings next to you, you don't get a lot of fresh air coming in. So I definitely think that could have been handled differently. Uh, either they clued Michelle, Michelle, Nicole into the filming conditions there, or uh, they respected her position enough to make sure that she had a place to go. I mean, it's kind of like asking a top surgeon to perform surgery in conditions that are not optimal to him or her. You want them at you want them at their best, doing their best work. And if they can't perform their best because they're sweating buckets, which is absolutely a possibility in August, um, or if they're just frazzled enough by the throngs of people around, then they're not going to give you their best job. So I don't really see how that was something that, uh, you know, was hard to understand. To me, that was really easy to understand. And, um, so I think that that was uh, one thing. Another thing I wanted to say was, she, it came to my mind as I was talking about this, um, being on the set of movies. Oh, this should be no secret to anybody. Jackie Chan in his autobiography, or biography, I think it was an autobiography, years ago, like 20 years ago, he was writing about how Hong Kong films and how it's so different from Hollywood because in Hong Kong, basically, they can do whatever they want. They do their own stunts. I think some of you who are familiar with with this, um, with the, the Hong Kong filming style and the martial art films and others, they do their own stunts. There's no insurance. Um, maybe there is now, but when he was talking about it, you know, it was just a free-for-all and there's a lot of improvisa improvisation on the set. They didn't really follow the script. Maybe they didn't even have a script. Um, so that would have been something that's completely different to a Hollywood actor or actress where improvisation improvisation is something that might not happen uh, as a matter of course. It might be something that happens every once in a while with an actor, say Robin Williams, who's very versed in improvising, um, but not something that is the norm. It's usually the exception to the norm. But in Hong Kong filming, according to Jackie Chan's autobiography, according to what I've witnessed, um, which is not a lot, but still, uh, that's something that that again could have been brought to the fore beforehand. So again, it's all about respect, respecting who you're dealing with. Um, on the other hand, Michelle's, uh, I don't know why I keep calling her Michelle. Uh, Nicole, um, Nicole's company could have communicated that better to her, that this is how it's gonna be, so just be prepared uh, if there really was nothing they could do about it. But there's always something you can do about it, right? It just may not be uh, they may not be as open-minded. Again, respect and keeping an open mind. So either Nicole would have been more open-minded about how the shoot was going to be and just accept it for what it is, or they could have been a little bit the Hong Kong uh, side of things or anyone familiar with Hong Kong filming. I would have been able to, to say like, look, I think we need to kind of uh, not be so narrow-minded and just getting it done, 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 being very practical. We do need to think about who we're working with and provide something that will allow them to give their best performance. So that is something that um, 
That's what I think about the whole Nicole Kidman thing. She did leave Hong Kong. She will be coming back in November, according to reports, to finish up. Of course, Amazon came out and said, no, there was no dispute. She was always scheduled to leave. She was always scheduled to, um, to like she wrapped her scenes and that was always in the cards for her to leave. So there was nothing to see here. Everything is fine. And that might be the case as well. But again, just looking at the pictures, knowing what I know about Hong Kong filming, um, I can absolutely see how it could have happened where there was dispute with the director. And again, asking why, why is it like this? And now we're in the thick of things and, and nothing can be done. So I can't work like this. And then I'll come back in November. It's cooler. You sort yourselves out. That's totally what I could see happening as well. And there's one more thing, a little bit of insider information is that I do know somebody who works in Hong Kong film a lot more intimately than I do. And in a conversation with him, I was like, you know, what, what happened? I mean, is there any truth to that? And he's like, well, all I know is that somebody was hired to be a go between somebody who is very well known in the Hong Kong filming circles, um, but is not from Hong Kong, uh, was hired to kind of sort smooth things out and sort things out and to su provide suggestions, a consultant to provide suggestions on how this could be done. And he left early on because he was like, no one's listening to me. And that's something else that happens a lot too, is that um, you might have open-minded ideas and provide solutions to problems that people may not realize can occur until they occur. And um, then they're like, ah, oh, maybe we should have listened to this guy. But he was hired. He left early on because nobody was really taking his his uh, suggestions seriously. And so there you go. Maybe maybe that happened too. But hopefully in November, Nicole will be back and it will be absolutely a lot cooler. So if they do need to reshoot some scenes, then that would be at least one thing that could be taken care of. But I do hope that that both sides can respect each other enough to realize that you do need to respect, keep an open mind, listen to what people are saying, and learn how it can be better. And again, that is all talked about in my role book. Um, so if you haven't yet gotten a copy of Roll, please do. It's good for children. Of course, it was written for children, but there's a lot of notes to parents on the inside and notes to just, it's just a great way to, there's my notes to parents. It's just a great way to, uh, to live, to remind yourself, always be respectful for yourself, you know, respect yourself first and foremost, respect others, respect the environment. You have a responsibility to do that. Another R word and to follow rules. Okay. Rules is another R word. Keep an open mind, listen and learn. So I hope you enjoyed this little chat of mine. I hope there were some cultural, uh, cultural information in there that you found interesting. If you've got anything to add, please do comment below. I would love to read what you have to say and we can continue our discussion. Well, this wasn't a discussion. It was me telling you what I thought, but I'd love to discuss with you below. So please do um, comment below. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I look forward to the next time. I hope everyone's doing well wherever you are. And um, thank you guys so much. Bye.